the world of art and the rich have always intertwined. While erstwhile kings, grand dukes and wealthy merchants were great patrons of art, today billionaires have taken over as art connoisseurs. They buy art to appreciate it, to learn from it and to profit from it, both socially as well as financially. Style icon, a fitness freak, the chairman of a 30 billion rupee conglomerate and also an art connoisseur to say the least, Yash Birla wears many hats. As an avid art collector, Yash spends a fair amount of time acquiring artworks of masters like M.F. Hussain, Akbar Padamsi and Raza. So Yash, your interest in art has obviously started at a very young age obviously because uh, your family was interested in art and they started collecting over a period of time but that kind of art would be very different I would imagine, right? Um, yeah, I think the art in, in like a home like mine is belonging to the taste of three generations. This kind of art of course came much later like the kind of art that we are seeing over here. Now he is among your uh, favourite paint artists, yes? Yeah, of course, Bose, um, he's a very well-renowned artist and uh, though personally I'm not a fan of uh, abstract paintings, mm -hmm. but Bose, why he seems to be a favourite artist of mine, even though it's an abstract painting which is not really the genre I really take to, right. if you see the vibrancy of the colours, the interplay of the, the various colours and just the feeling associated when you look at this piece of art, is that you just feel happy. But you know, the kind of art that you grew up with, I'm not quite sure whether um, the three generations that you spoke about would have actually invested in art of this nature. My great grandfather used to have a lot of art and antiques. Now you know you, you know about miniature arts. Yes. Basically in Rajasthan, um, there was an evolution of miniature arts, which is actually very beautiful art because everything is kind of compressed to a miniature size. So the details you find in those paintings, you probably won't be able to appreciate in like these large size canvases. Right. So he used to collect, I have a lot of those which he collected. Uh, surprisingly, the second generation, which is my, my parents' generation, my mother is very fond of contemporary art. She was mm -hmm. fond of antiques also. So it was like kind of a blend between the old and the new. Right. So she was actually the one who started con collecting a lot of contemporary art. So at the time when the artist has barely started painting uh, from a Ram Kumar to an Anjoli Ilamen and to a Hussain who was established but maybe not to the level you see him today, to a right. Bendre who was blind in one eye and used to do what you call technically the Bindu work before she passed away right. and that's what I really grew up seeing. Whenever she used to come home, even though I was a kid, she used to always say, that, what do you think of this piece I have bought and uh, she used to also tell me the value, do you think it's too expensive, do you think it's right, some people told me it's all just what some strokes here. How old were you then when she's asking you for your opinion? 12, some 13, wow. 14, 15. <laughs> and what would you say? I actually used to love whatever she used to do, I think she had brilliant taste, so whatever she used to get, I used to kind of appreciate it, but at that time she got some of these abstract artists, so even I said, ah, when you're saying, yeah, it, some couple of strokes, why would you pay so much? It seems a little expensive, but I know the way you put it up, it looked nice, Mama. Uh, the reason why I pursued it, uh, to be honest, is because when I, as, as I told you, my mom was very fond of it, but when she passed on, I just thought that everything she really liked, in whatever way I could, I should carry it on. Right. So this was one area which I kind of uh, chose to, you know, say, okay, she collected this, let me add to a collection. Right. And so it so happened that the artist she had started collecting and kind of started, you know, emulating her and I said, let me collect some more of these. Sure. So at that point of time, there were artists like Rameshwar Bhutta, which she had got, um, Anjali Ila Menon, as I mentioned to you. Yes. So I, wherever I could find pieces of that, um, of that genre or that artist, I started collecting them. Some of these artworks I got for practically not much of value because in those days, as I'm saying, it was still evolving, the art right. market, and they weren't so well recognized. And today when you look back at it, you say, oh wow, why didn't I buy some more pieces? <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> You're always clever on hindsight, aren't you? And when it comes to art and investing in art, uh, when you think of the money value associated yeah. with it, you always think, damn, I wish you I had do. got it at that you time. Do. But I feel happy that I never bought it for the sake of money. Let's, let's be honest, I do feel happy when I look at something that I bought it as, as low as that and today it's you become like 500,000% uh, return I've got on my investment. That's always a good feeling, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, but I, the better feeling is that when I bought it, I didn't buy it for that.
personal collection apart, Yash Birla has also ventured into the business of art. He owns and manages art galleries, spaces that blend global ideologies and culture by bringing together works of both world-renowned artists and young Indian talent. So Yash, at which point in time does your interest uh, in art, your passion for it, turn into a business when you start thinking, ha, huh, there is money to be made over here? Actually, it was pretty spontaneous. It wasn't really planned and thought of or that you make a project report and you have a projection and nothing like this. Um, it's just something I'm passionate about. Mm -hmm. I love art. Um, I have certain infrastructure in place which don't really require me to plan too much. Sure. That, you know, I have to buy a place, I have to rent a place, I have to keep a separate organization. Right. I have to employ separate people. Yeah. Yeah, you do, for any business you do. But it wasn't all that much of planning because you already have the infrastructure and organization. Right. So something I'm passionate about, something which I do believe has, uh, I mean there are a lot of lovely art galleries, but it's been looked at a very individualistic way. I think everything in the end uh, cannot be taken on a large scale unless you corporatize it. Right? Sure, sure. Not that I'm intending to make like multiple galleries across the country and make it like a institutional business. But um, yes, the endeavor would be that to corporatize as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So I just thought since I'm so passionate about it, I have the infrastructure, why not do something uh, without really planning too much. But in the business of selling art, what would you tell people who are buying it? Whatever we do, we do it with a long-term perspective, not for immediate gains, but for a long-term. And something which we're passionate about, which we value, which we believe in. People can come, walk in, stroll in, look at it, study it. Students, um, tourists can come and understand what Indian art is about. Right now, I feel like these spaces are studying us even as we speak. It's a remarkable painting and the artist you particularly like, yes? Yeah, this is an artist called Jalaja. I think it's, it's a very different uh, form of contemporary art with which you are seeing over here. It's just faces. And as you see, some are the face of eminent people yeah. through history we, we, we see over here. Sure. And then there's the, the, the common man behind those people. Lots of variety in art as well. Yeah. And of course, uh, we uh, see some of it over here. And of course, we have uh, Yash who is kind of turning that passion into a little bit of business, but not really planning it, but it's turning out quite well right now, looking at the demand in art. But there are various ways of investing in art. Arzan Kambata, for one, he is turning scraps into marvelous art. We're meeting him after a small break. Yash, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much. We will take a small breather, but we'll return here on Smart Money Aspire. Don't go away.